copyright disclaimer under the section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. Salam alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Somebody put in the chat, the devil is a liar. Please. Language is important. Knowing your enemy is important. Knowing who your brother is is important. All these things are important. All these things are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. In great detail. How are you going to wag your finger in the face of black people and other Muslims today and twitch and twirl, twirl and crink your neck and twerk for your white zaddies tomorrow? How are you going to do that? Thank you. The devil's a liar. Somebody put in the chat, the devil's a liar. Somebody put in the chat, the devil is a liar. Listen to this. Listen now. Yeah, I, I understand that, Prime Minister, but you have deep economic ties with China, and it would appear that Muslims are being detained and abused in China. Does that not concern you? Uh, you see, the, our relationship with China is such that whatever uh, issues we raise with China are always, uh, uh, you know, behind closed doors. Because Chinese society is such, and we respect them. I mean, we have... Uh, economic ties with China. It's our, he's, uh, China is our neighbor. They've, they've been very good to us in our most difficult times. So we respect the fact that if we have concerns, we talk about behind closed doors. Family, see how this prime minister wagged his face in the world for the world leaders against Islamophobia? Wag his finger for a family that got run over by a white supremacist. But when it came to China and the Uyghurs, he remembered his pockets. Some of you Muslims, actually most of you Muslims rather, in the West, and unfortunately this is a disease that has crept into the black community. But there is a global black awakening and we hope this global black awakening continues. But the majority of you Muslims, whenever the enemy kills a black person, you're nowhere to be found. Nowhere. But whenever the enemy kills a Pakistani, kills a Palestinian, you're out in the streets protesting. This two-faced approach is one thing, but it's a completely different thing where not only is your justice very selective and your memory is short when it comes to black people, but it's a very different thing when you call yourself a man and you can't even defend your masjid or your women. Black people, these masjid, who is normally the security guards at these masjid? Ya Salam. Who do they put as security? Somebody put in the chat. Their massages that they can't defend. Who do they make the security? Somebody put in that chat to make sure I'm not crazy. So they can make 
black people the security to defend their message because they know we will. But when there's no black person to defend their message, to defend their women, to, to whatever it is, who, who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? It's not Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? That's right. Black people, they always make black people, particularly the black converts, the security for their message. Then they want to go on TV and announce to the world some of these imams will lie. Will lie their problems, man. They're big problems. They don't have a clue. Can barely speak English. Islam, Islam, brother, is is about love, not hate. We only love, we don't hate. Well, I, I'm not even making this up. On national TV. We believe in love and affection. So it is very unfortunate, but we know uh, in the society sometimes some people, they have this kind of uh, thoughts and uh, uh, acts. So I think uh, we should promote as much as possible uh, to these especially ignorant people that uh, have a love for everyone, regardless of uh, color and race and uh, uh, faith. Your immediate re reaction to, you know, those that are opposed to the erection of the mosque here? I think there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, many, many of the objectors, I believe, um, have no idea what uh, the Islamic faith is all about. Islam is a religion of peace, um, and I think we need to compliment the mayor of the city of Shwane, the city of Shwane, for allocating this tract of land at no cost to the Muslim community. Falala, historically, is a former white area. Today, we have members of the various communities living in harmony in this particular area. Uh, that is why there are many churches in this area, uh, and the Muslim community, the 200-plus families, have a right to practice their religious uh, freely. We have a Constitution, a great constitution in South Africa. It guarantees us freedom of religion. It guarantees us free speech. And what we are seeing here is a group of racists, largely racists, who are making a noise linking Islam to ISIS, linking the religion to one which is intolerant. And that is uh, very, very unfortunate. But why do you call them racist? Clearly, we've seen them at meetings. We've seen them objecting. They are clearly opposed to the Muslim community. The Muslim community, all we want to do is to pray in peace and harmony five times a day, which is our, our, our duty to do. We are about love. We don't want the Islamophobia, brother. We are about love. We want the love and not the hate. <laughs> are you serious? No, brother. We are not the extremist, brother. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We are love. We are love. We are loving. We are not hating. We are not fighting anybody. We just want peace. You know, Islam, Islam, brother, Islam is peace. Islam is peace. <laughs> you can't make this crap up. You can't make this crap up. There has been a sharp increase of attacks against Muslims, especially not last year, particularly here in Canada. And that's why, if you didn't know, that's why. Be offended if you want to be offended, but I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why they're attacking you. You're out there. You're getting attacked by the wolf and ask, asking the cougar to protect you from a wolf and you're a rabbit. You're the rabbit. The wolf is attacking you. You go ask the cougar to help, to help protect you against the wolf. That's what you're doing. Are you, are you understanding me? These Islamic organizations that promote this stuff, I don't want to mention their names, but I can think of, I actually, I not think of, I know two Islamic organizations that are absolutely ridiculous and, and the way that they handled those, uh, the, the family that got attacked in, in London, Rahimahumullah. Ridiculous. We as Canadians, we must stand up against Islamophobia. This, you know, this is another reason. That's another video anyway. This is another reason why I don't like using the term Islamophobia. I don't like using it. As a matter of fact, you never heard me use it ever. Because I know language is important. I know what Islamophobia implies. 
I know how the enemy works. I know how to use terminology to divide people and separate people. So certain people use certain language. You can tell their political leanings, leanings by that language. So these people who are always talking about Islamophobia, they usually have liberal leanings. If Islamophobia was a thing, the Prophet ﷺ would have said it at his time. Because nobody hated Islam more than um, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl. You understand me? When the enemy sees you protesting and and they're, they're fighting you with, with bombs and planes and guns and you're fighting them with picket signs. You know what you look like? Do you know what you look like? <laughs> Anyways, this is... This has been long enough, inshallah. Like, subscribe, share. Hit me up on Patreon. My my YouTube, uh, it didn't work, so I'm going to have to. If you guys uh, want to share from YouTube, I'm going to uh, download my Facebook on my YouTube so I can, it can show my YouTube because my YouTube, it, it cut out for some reason, right? But I hate Islamophobia because it doesn't include you nor nor people who look like us. Islamophobia is generally used by, you know, certain demographics of people, mostly South Asians and the occasional Arab and whatnot, but they usually have liberal pro political leanings. Are you understanding me? Because they want to package you in with the homosexuals. So these people generally, they, they uh, vote liberal. So they want to put you in with, with that class. And that's how they do things. All this intersectional stuff, all this intersectionality is uh, our means of division for the enemy. You understand? So now you help the, these liberal parties, you're going to have to help the, the LGBTQs and all kind of stuff. That's how they work. I just received a message from a MSA. They said that they were invited to an anti-Islamophobia march. They attended the march they found out that the leadership of the march was the LGBT movement. It was, they were so happy, look all these people supporting us. Well, of course, you're naive, you're kids, you don't know anything, okay? What happened next? Next week, right? Before a week transpired. You see, we helped you. Now we expect you to help us. Well, you're against Islamophobia. Why Islamophobia, not homophobia, right? Because you ac accepted the framework, a, a framework. Right? And so you have to accept the whole menu now. So when you do these things, we have to do it in an original way, in our own language. We don't need for people to like, to accept us. That's not something that's in our aqidah. Right? In the Quran, show me one ayah of Quran, O mu'mineen, gather and make sure the kuffar like you. There's no such ayah. Right? So when we're adopting something outside of the Qur'an, it's going to contradict us eventually. And that's why I've never seen one of these activists be consistent in his Islam. He's going to always have to go and support some cause. That's kufr in your deen. I don't need your acceptance, and you don't need their acceptance. What we need to do is give da'wah. We need to protect the women on the one hand, protect the brothers, okay, on the one hand, security, but we also need to give da'wah. We need to be good at da'wah. I wouldn't jump on the activist lang language of anti-Islamophobia. I, I wouldn't use that. I just, I'm doing da'wah, right? I'm doing da'wah. I don't need anyone's help to do da'wah, right? We are, our agenda is not to be accepted. Our agenda is to do da'wah to Allah. What is the point if everyone accepts you and they still don't accept Allah? You're st are you happy? Think about this. That's what Islamophobia is. We accept you. We still don't accept Allah, right? And you're accepting them, accepting you, and not accepting Allah. It's a very selfish mentality that... We want us to be safe. No, we don't care about ourselves. We care that people believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. If that means we have to suffer a little bit in the process, that's worth the cost. Because we, the, the, the whole phobia thing and acceptance thing and don't judge uh, mentality is all for people who, who, they're fighting for the dunya. They want others to accept them so they have a good life. This is not our agenda. Our agenda is to call people to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's just how they work. If you think that your enemy respects you calling the police after a man and a woman, and you are three men, and there's a man and a woman there, and you call the police, you think that, and the enemy's watching the same news that we're watching. They look at you like lunch. They look at you like lunch. 
So if you can't protect your own massage, then why are you calling the black brothers to come and be your security guards? Why? You know, and I just did the loudest yell that I could possibly do. I just like, it was so loud, but I wanted to cry. I couldn't. A woman was with me. Everything that you post today, please tag it with the hashtag end Islamophobia. Together, we can make this better. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, some brothers found this death threat on my car today. Sheikh Uthman, they misspelled Sheikh and Uthman. We know your car, we know your house. Stop. Do what? They misspelled Dawah or die. It's Saints of Sam. You saints, you devils, you guys do whatever you want. We're not stopping Dawah. This is what I think is your death threat. You know my house, you know my car. Come do something. So we can throw ourselves in danger and you, can get, you get to call the police. Can't even protect your women from the streets. You know what I mean? The first people, these were white supremacists, they always attack the Muslim woman first. Because the Muslim woman is, the, is very visible as a Muslim in the West because she's wearing hijab. So if you don't have the wherewithal to get in the streets and find who's attacking your woman out there in Edmonton, and you keep screaming about, oh, these anti-Islamic attacks on television. On television, you're doing this. Left your country as a refugee the day before. Got status yesterday. And today you're begging for your rights against Islamophobia. Doing it on television, live TV. Because you can't protect your own woman. It's going to increase the attacks, dummy. Not lower it. That's why the attacks are increasing. Because they see what you're doing. If you give them a reason not to attack you, guess what? They won't. Have you ever been bullied in school? Has a bully ever stopped bullying you in school because he asked them real nice? Please stop bullying me, please. It's wrong what you're doing. You think the, Isra the what you call it? Those Zionist Israelis in Palestine Stop bombing Palestinians because they asked them real nice. You think they care about the international protest? Does it look like they, they just act, attacked them yesterday? They legit attacked them yesterday. You're showing them weakness. That's why they attack. That's my message. Just as the slave master in that day used Tom, the house Negro, to keep the field Negroes in check, the same old slave master today has Negroes who are nothing but modern Uncle Toms, 20th century Uncle Toms, to keep you and me in check, keep us under control, keep us passive and peaceful and nonviolent. That's Tom making you nonviolent. It's like when you go to the dentist and the man is going to take your tooth, you're going to fight him when he start pulling. So they squirt some stuff in your jaw called Novocaine to make you think they're not doing anything to you. <laughs> so you sit there and cause you got all that Novocaine in your jaw, you suffer peacefully. <laughs> Blood running all down your jaw and you don't know what's happening. Because someone has taught you to suffer peacefully. The white man do the same thing to you in the street. When he don't want to put knots on your head and take advantage of you and don't have to be afraid of you fighting back, to keep you from fighting back, he get these old religious Uncle Toms to teach you and me. They're just like Novocaine, suffer peacefully. Don't stop suffering, just suffer peacefully. As Reverend Cleve pointed out, let your blood flow in the streets. This is a shame. 
And you know he's a Christian preacher. If it's a shame to him, you know what it is to me. <laughs> nothing in our book, the Quran, as you call it, Koran, teaches us to suffer peacefully. Our religion teaches us to be intelligent, be peaceful, be courteous, obey the law, respect everyone. But if someone puts his hand on you, send them to the cemetery. <laughs> That's a good religion. In fact, that's that old time religion. That's the one that Ma and Pa used to talk about. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and a head for a head, and a life for a life. That's a good religion. And then anybody, no one resents that kind of religion being taught but a wolf who intends to make you his meal. This is the way it is with the white man in America. He's a wolf and you a sheep. Anytime a shepherd, a pastor, teach you and me not to run from the white man and at the same time teaches don't fight the white man, he's a traitor to you and me. Don't lay down our life all by itself. No, preserve your life. It's the best thing you got. And if you got to give it up, let it be even Stephen. Right.